Welcome back, good looking. Thanks so much for joining me, Kendra Morgan O here. And today we're going to be focusing on a palette that I was able to purchase for $56.20. Yes, you heard it right. A Pat McGrath Mothership palette that I purchased for $56.20. So if you're interested in some astral shade formulation comparisons and a special look that I did with this palette, then make sure you stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining me, Kendra Morgan Official here, and I put out content weekly centered around single eyeshadows with a side of palettes, makeup brushes, and sunscreen. So if you like that kind of content, subscribe. Let's get started. Like the title says, and a little bit of a clickbait here, Hannah Louise Poston put out a review on the Mothership Midnight Sun palette. I definitely, definitely agree that this is probably one of the palettes, one of her best mothership palettes of all times, including some of the more recent ones that are warm tone, but you guys know how I feel about pinks. I'm not a huge pink fan. Um, also what swayed my decision, not gonna lie, the biggest decision maker is not actually that Hannah Louise posted made me buy the palette, although her beautiful swatches and her comparisons and her poetic dialogue centered around this palette really influenced me that and confirmed that I was making the right decision when I purchased this palette was the fact that Pat McGrath Labs put this palette on sale for $75 and then with an additional 25% off coupon through Instagram I was able to purchase the palette for $56.20 so that's how I got it for the cheap cheap price that I did so I when I opened this I really took into consideration that this is actually a $125 palette. I will link in the description box the palette. Now, it is not on sale currently for $75, um, and it, the Instagram does still pass out the 25% off coupon, so sorry that I blinded you just now. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and sit this down. I just want you to know that this was a particular situation where stacking a code was, you know, permissible or I was able to get away with stacking a code but unfortunately the palette went back up to its original market retail price and you could use a 25% off Instagram coupon in fact I can give you that coupon so just DM me if you're interested I think I saw it floating around the other day so I think it's still out there okay let's first deep dive into some of the shades in this palette that I was most intrigued about. One of the most important things that Hannah Louise Poston told me in her review of this palette was that she didn't feel like she had the ability to talk about high-end or and or luxury brands without experiencing at least a representation of that formula so for her she chose the mothership six palette and I did as well I kind of felt like in the past I have duped Pat McGrath's palettes and I really wasn't sure what formula I was duping out so I had no idea what shadows would mimic closely like the astral shades or the satins or some of the you know shimmer shades or even what the mattes looked like I just took a guess as to what I saw other people reviewing what those shadows would look like I'm pretty close in my um, assumptions that the mattes really perform very similar to Sydney Grace and even in some forms Sydney Grace might be just a smidge better and a above and beyond but I will say this these astral shades I was entirely out in left field so I'm really glad that I did have the opportunity to purchase a palette at a price point that I felt I could afford um, to get a good feel and representation of Pat McGrath's formula so let's go ahead and see what I have in my collection that can dupe the vibes and shades of some of these astral shades so let's check it out Okay, here we are. We have the Pat McGrath Labs Midnight Sun. So let's go into swatches and then I want to show you <clears throat> what I have in my collection that's similar. So we'll kind of treat it like this is a six pan and these are the four, you know, shades. All right, first shade, Skin Show Moon Glow.
And then bronze eclipse. Vermilion Venom. And this is a matte shade. I'm filming this after I've went and exercised, so my hands are super bloated, swollen kind of looking. More than normal, let's put it that way. All right. Then skipping down here to Extreme Dusk. This is kind of a charcoal, a blackened charcoal gray. Okay. Uh, taboo. This camel looking mid toned. Uh, I don't know. I would say it's a brown, an orange brown. Then lastly, in this six pan portion, we have Wicked Envy. And this is like a shimmer, but it's not especially shimmery. It is more of a satin finish. All right, let's go ahead and head into the astral shades. Okay, and here they are in all their glory. Let's go ahead and swatch Blood Moon 005. And for those, I'm going to go ahead and swatch them on the back of my hand. So there's some bend. Next we have Jubilee, and this one is broken in my pan. And I am working on figuring out how I can repress it, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I can still get a swatch out of it just fine. <coughs> Blitz Violet Orchid. It looks like I'm white knuckling it, but I'm, I'm just swollen and bloated from the exercising. Okay. And lastly, and probably my most favorite shade in this is Astral Solstice. I don't know if I got all of that on. Okay, here we go. And you can see, like, if you laid down a color underneath it, what it would look like. So, be pretty. It's kind of, I think it's just my fingers stained, to be honest with you. Very wet and beautiful. All right, let's take a look at particularly these four shades and see what I have in my collection. Okay, so I grabbed a couple of my shadows. We're gonna take a look at some different options. Uh, alternatives, these are not dupe shades by any means, but there we go. Let's go ahead and get the main swatch on this arm and then we can do like all the fun stuff on this arm, I guess. So we're gonna look at Blood Moon first and I'll show you a couple of different options. So very, very textured, sparkly. Really, truly one of a kind. Let's go ahead and get it nice and juicy, shall we? A little bit built up here. All right. 
So if we look at Makeup Geek's formula, and we look at Flamethrower, this is what Flamethrower looks like. And just kind of really get a good swatch. You can see that there's a lot of pigment, but the mica flecks are a lot smaller. You can really see the difference in formulation in those two shadows. So that's what Makeup Geek's formula looks like in relation to a Pat McGrath. And then here is Blaze from Sydney Grace. Again, very pigmented, maybe a little bit more textured than the Makeup Geek formula. And quite possibly the most similar. That's those two. So I'd say that's the closest so far. If you really wanted to get that texture though, you'd want to go with probably a loose shadow like the Inglot one that I have here. This isn't really going to be very indicative of the shade. However, I think you can see in the swatch how this is very much similar to the Pat McGrath. And that's probably what makes it so unique that a formula like this, which is found most commonly in loose, is found in a palette in the Pat McGrath. So that's probably the closest in texture, not really very close in color. I mean, that undertone looks similar, but the shine over the top is, this is able to keep that burnt, kind of that orangey bronze copper a lot better than this one. Okay. Okay, next up, we've got this Blitz Violet Orchid shade. So let's go ahead and get a swatch of it really quickly. Beautiful shade. And the closest I have to that is a Davina shadow and it is Are You a Good Witch? Found in her collection. It's I bought it in a um, a collection. So very similar. It leans a little bit more pink. This is more of a true indigo, I would say. But as far as formulation goes, you can kind of almost see they're pretty similar. They're fairly similar. This one's just leaning a little more warmer. So... That's what I found as far as the closest in both formulation and color wise. Just kidding, I found another one and it is in the same collection. It's Ding Adiri. I thought there was another one that I had found that was a little bit closer and it's kind of almost a blackened base though. So when you see it, it looks a little bit darker, but it has that similarity in formulation to the Pat McGrath, probably not as much luster like the Pat McGrath formula, but color-wise, I would say they're the most similar. There you go, you can kind of see it. Then moving on to Jubilee. Oops, wrong finger. Oh, we're kind of, this is kind of stained, so I'll move this over just a little bit. And for that, I kind of think that Harvest by Terra Moons, um, first off, blows it out of the water because it is like this duochrome looking shadow, but it kind of gives a very similar formulation. As you can see, it's not really going to be very similar, but as far as the kind of sheen it gives, it's a little bit more orange, but I kind of thought it was similar. I actually don't have very much that is that close. I think I also would like to compare it to this um, Ingla AMC 124. I received this in a gift and I pressed it. It originally came loose and I pressed it. Um, yeah, just, I don't think I added any binding agent to it. So, so let's go ahead and see. But yeah, yeah, that's not, that's not close at all. That is not close at all. This is probably a little closer. 
but there you go. Then I have some copacetics, nothing golden can stay. And it kind of looked like it was, I don't know, a little bit sheeny. The formula, however, is almost of a satin finish, so that's not really, not really what we're looking for, but you know, if you kind of wanted the color maybe, you see how it somewhat looks similar to that? Okay, it did when I was doing it, but it doesn't really look very similar anymore. I wonder if that has like some blue from my fingers. Then I also have Mimosa from Copacetic Cosmetics. This is more of a peach beige, but it kind of has that, I don't know, kind of has that uh, textured look to it. So I kind of thought that was similar. Okay, lastly, and I think this is the most fun one, so I went ahead and kind of like put some lotion on my hands so that way we can get like a good primer stick, like a glitter glue effect. Uh, let's watch it. Yes. I need more. Look at that. That's just like amazing. Okay, so what I found in my collection, let me go ahead and move these aside, put these in, were some. Various ones. I think this is probably the most dissimilar, but it's like really beautiful. And it is my Ulta Beauty Bouncy Eyeshadow, which I am going to actually do a video on these. My most wet, glossy, glittery, shimmery, shiny shadows that are singles. It's the um, Ulta Beauty Bounce Eyeshadow in Buttercream. And you can see it's like it's like kind of like a gloss. It reminds me of the Fenty Gloss Balm. I've never actually used the Fenty Gloss Balm, but it kind of reminds me of like something that would be something similar to that. Oh, whoa. Just see that? We just hit jackpot right there. It kind of looks similar to that. It's a little more icy blue, not really any glitter, but it's kind of, I don't know. The idea is still the same if you got this instead, kind of to mimic that. I think that would be really nice. The next shadow that's probably the most dissimilar, but it's a little bit more similar to Astral Solstice is the shade from La Rock. You can buy it as a single or you can buy it as um, a palette, which would be the La Rock Soleil palette. And it is in the shade Opal. And believe it or not, it again has that very shimmery, slick look to it. No glitter. We're not there yet. We don't have texture, but we've got the same idea. See that? See that? How like that base is kind of similar to the Pat McGrath one. So that's why I chose that. It is an $8 single. So unless you truly like want more of a wet look and not a glittery wet look, I would skip out on this shade and go for something like this. This is $9, but I think it's well worth it. So probably the one that I think is second most similar is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow by ColourPop and India's in the shade Ritz. It has kind of that glitteriness. It has a little bit more of a spongy bouncy formula, but this does have a blue iridescence to it almost. But I think that's kind of where you get the sparkle from. It does have more of a base and it's more of a beige, warm, peachy base than the astral shade. But I think when you look at the actual shift, it's very close to the shade in Pat McGrath's palette. All right, then the one that I think that's the most similar, which is, it's very expensive though, 
is the sh Moon Dust Shadow from Urban Decay, and it is Space Cowboy. So let me go ahead and show you the back real quick. You get 1.8 grams, though. And these do matter because these are really, really super toppery shades. Space Cowboy and Ritz are almost indistinguishable, but I feel like this does have more glitter when comparing it, so... Let's go ahead and compare Ritz really quickly. There may be another Super Shock Shadow out there that's a little bit closer. Oh, we just panned. Do you see the baby pan? Look at the pan. So sweet. I'm going to put this on. It's just not quite as glittery. But those are about as close as I feel like I can get. I'm not sure if you found another Inglot shade you know, loose pigment that maybe it wouldn't be something that you could go for. Let's see here. I just feel like it has too much pigment for that shade. This is very, very unique formulation. I will say that much. So I feel like all the rest of these are pretty well dupable. Um, I don't know. I guess I could pull out some of these other ones if you wanted me to, but I just think that the astral shades is what everybody's super hyper focused on when choosing a mothership palette. And so that's why I wanted to make sure that I focused on them, but I could probably pick out all Sydney gray shadows and the formula would probably be very similar. And I could probably find some very similar shades. Like this looks like Bailey's bliss or milk and cookies. Um, this looks like, Hmm, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I, I know I've seen these shadows and they look very similar to the Sydney Grace formula. So anyways, back to the lab. I hope you guys are enjoying the astral shades that I found some comparisons. Were you surprised at all that Terra Moons and Davina were some of the contenders for duping the shades of the astrals? Leave a comment down below on what you think. And let's go ahead and get into this look here. I know this is going to sound really basic B, but let's start with Taboo. Spectacular. Oh, when you got a good brush and a good shadow. No blending necessary. You basically can just place it. And I'm bringing it up and over. Just look, but I do want to do a very peri one soon. Ooh, this is blending nice. Spring it away. Wonderful brushes. I am um, going to be reviewing these brushes later on this year, but I am going to take my time on brushes and just kind of focus on really like making sure that I use every brush multiple, multiple times and with multiple products as well. So then I can give you, you know, which ones it works best with, especially now that I'm using a lot of, and doing a lot of synthetic brush reviews. You can do a lot more with a synthetic brush than a powder brush, I feel like, because you just really have to be more careful with natural bristle brushes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Mm, I really kind of want to just smear this all over the lid. I think I will. Or should I use the astral shade right here, um, excuse me, right here? I wonder if I should put that over the top. But I really want to use this one. Hmm. I think I better go with this one. But let's lay down a base because that astral shade is very, what's the term? Glittery, it's a little chunkier, so it might be more see-through. This is the Delium Tool 765. And I'm just gonna use this to kind of stamp. And I really like this when I flip it down and angle it like that because it just does the perfect angle for this outer third. Ooh, my eyes are popping. I love it. And I'm gonna stay thick and heavy until right about there. 
Do you see that? Right about there. And then I'm bringing it up. And then I'm flipping it over and brushing it inward. Just to make sure I get both sides. Very minimal fallout, but I will say there is a little bit. That, for me, I don't like it because I like coming on camera with my base done. So I like to make it so that I can do either or. And if I can't, then it's kind of like, mm. Now this side, I'm obviously I'm not able to do exactly as, you know, a mirrored image, but you know, it's still the same idea where I'm just gonna kind of do that and then I'm gonna bring it down in like that. <laughs> it's not really coming across as very shiny. It's very almost satin-like. Yeah. It's a very heavy emollient based pigment. And so therefore, I'm feeling like it's just, it's a satin. It must be a satin. I don't know. Okay. Grabbing Skin Show Moon Glow. This shade right here, I gotta be real careful. And that is with the Delium Tool 773. Pick that up. I think I might go ahead and spray my brush with this. Just so that <clears throat> then tap off any excess because then you know it's like really a big chunk. I like a very like highlighted inner corner. Again, it's a, it's a more satin. I don't really know if I like this formula. I mean, to be honest with you, I would, it's very indicative to Cine Grace's satin formula. Um, I'm trying to think. The first one that comes to mind is Springtime, but that's like a lime springy green. I'm trying to think of the other ones. She has a few purple shades that are like this. And they're kind of just like a satin wash of color. Hers are even a little bit more shiny than this. This is too shimmery for, you know, the crease, like a crease shade, but it's not shimmery enough to be on the lid like this without something else. But, you know, it still has some opacity, so that's nice. Mm, yeah, I mean, it, it's okay. It's, it's just a preference. It's a preference. Don't come after me. I'm not a huge fan of it, I gotta say. Hopefully it's not because my brush is dirty. And then I'm really gonna be in for it. Um, but judging by the way that I had to put it on with my finger with the other shade, I'm guessing it's just, it's just the formula. All right. Let's go ahead and dip into... This is Astral Nude. Is that what it's called? Astral Solstice. And then um, Blood Moon is the other one right there. That's going to go on the outer, and the inner will be the Astral Solstice. So I'll start with the Astral Solstice, which is a very, very beautiful shade and very difficult to replicate. I don't have anything in my collection that's close to that at all. Yeah, this is what's bringing the look to life. So I feel like these are, you know, they really are the intensifiers. I'm going to overlap slightly and then just bring it up. Oh, am I in focus? Probably. See it now? I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's the astral shade. There's no astral shade right there. So just something to consider when purchasing. I wish she sold these astral shades as singles. And you know, I'm okay paying low 30s, low 30s. And it needs to be a two, two and a half gram pan. Okay, Mother Pat? Then you, you know, you got my money. And just make it a compact that looks like this, only like a single. You think about 
And I think people would really like it and appreciate that more. I know she does have singles, but I don't think any of them are astral. I've checked. I didn't think they looked astral to me. And I'm just going to blend on the outside. So that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to do the astral blood moon shade and bring that all the way on the outer V. Really packing it in. And then just blending over. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's where this look came, you know, like everything else I feel like I could have replicated from my collection. Nothing, nothing over here on this side was like mind-blowing to me. Okay. I have better mattes. I have better satins. I do have, I don't know that there's any metallics in this. I don't think this green is a metallic. No, it's not. And see, the this, this form of satin leans too shimmery for me. I like a satin that's a little more matte. So basically, it's just a really, really good matte formula that maybe if you had made the color in a matte formula, it would have been more patchy. And that's why you add a little of that mica to make it more blendable. That's when it's okay for me. I don't really care for a satin that looks like that. And I'm dabbing around these edges just a little bit. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to put some eyebrow gel. I'm thinking this is like really, you know, nice. But again, unless you are after the astral shades and you're really in love with those, you're not getting anything that can't be, I don't want to say duplicated, but comp. It's a, there are so many comparable shades. And actually there's a lot of shades that are not as good as my singles. And that's good, that's good. That's what you guys need to hear. Now the astral shades, I haven't been able to find anything similar. <clears throat> I've been throwing around the word dupe quite freely this last 2021. And I think 2022, I'm gonna be just a little bit more careful when I do that. Just because I think people don't appreciate it as much when they get something and then it's like, well, this isn't the same thing. I would have much rather spent my money on something else. Filling in with the Makeup Geek Brown Eyeliner. Haven't tried the Spectrum ones. Need to use up a couple of these first. I did see that she is discontinuing some highlighter shades. So hopefully she's coming out with a better formula, like a balmy, glittery formula or maybe a powdery formula, but it doesn't emphasize texture. Her Makeup Geek um, highlighters seem to emphasize texture a little more than I like, so I don't typically use them that much. I use them more in the summer when I need to use more powders. I'll dust a little on, but I will say I don't have to use very much. All right, just gonna kind of blend this in just a little bit. I don't know. Mm. Let me just, I don't wanna do too much blending. I don't really wanna blend too much at all because I'm afraid I'm gonna blend those little glitter particles away. And it kinda does look like some of them are falling down. Let's run some of this shade right here. Venom. Yeah, let's run a little of that down here and I'm gonna drag it up and put it right in there. Ooh, do I wanna try this? This is a bold lip brush. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit too much. Oh, look at this little guy. You wanna talk about, this is a liner slash brow. Look at that. Look at that. That is super duper, oh my gosh. I just made like a huge dip in the pan. And I don't like blowing on my shadows, but it was like literally 
dripping, or not dripping, but like flaking everywhere. It's a pretty dry formula. I think I may have just pressed too hard in the pan, to be honest with you, because now I'm dragging it ever so slightly, and now it's working a lot better, but it is very powdery. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> I'm going to switch to my <laughs> AOA one. <laughs> that was super heavy. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> That's the reason why I've not been filming on a regular basis. All right, let's get a coat of mascara on. Yeah, I think that's nice, nice. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you guys out for the completed look. So stay tuned. Okay, that was a special look for another day that I had done, and this one I did also use the Mothership palette, but I didn't film it really. I think that's gonna conclude this video. So I think everything that I need to say has been said. This shade right up here broke and I'm going to film me trying to put it back together but I've watched a couple of films videos on um, people who depot these shadows and it's going to be a little trickier than I thought so it's taken a little bit longer than I think uh, to get this done but nonetheless I am going to try to show you how I'm going to repress the astral shade in my mothership palette so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you're looking forward to seeing how I repress this shade or whether we can or can't. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, subscribe. Make sure you like this video on your way out. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye!